Hey, I'm Daryl, and welcome to today's video. If you're an artist looking around on YouTube for art channels, as we tend to do, you run into a lot of technique-focused teaching videos and tutorials that show you things like 10 tips to drawing an eyeball correctly, or perspective life hacks, or whatever the topic is. Now, I want to say up front that there's nothing wrong with these types of videos, but time and time again, I see younger artists, myself included, run into the problem of aimlessly picking up skills here and there without giving much thought to what use we're putting those skills toward. A consequence of this is a lack of motivation to engage with these technique building exercises we set out for ourselves. And if you're in a routine that leads you to not wanting to show up at your desk to draw, that's worse for your art making than incorrectly drawing an eye. We lack focus at that stage and it tends to hold us back. It's okay to learn how to draw a plane today and hence tomorrow and the best method for drawing curly here the day after that. But if your main goal is to draw landscapes, you've got to draw a landscape at some point. And most of us going through the skill building cycle don't even stop to think about if we prefer drawing people or places more. We don't stop to find ourselves. In the past year, I've seen some growth in my art and the types of pictures I end up making. And it wasn't because of any rigorous fundamental drill practice or anything like that. The biggest change actually was my mindset toward how I engage with my art and figuring out what I actually like making. I've always had no shortage of ideas for cool paintings and drawings, but I usually wouldn't act on them. I'd file them away for some later date when I was, quote, good enough to attempt them. I'd have a cool painting in mind for a water titan in the midst of a storm and instead go drop boxes for three days because I need to, quote, master perspective and anatomy before I could try something like that. If that sounds familiar to you, then you know what I'm talking about. I would find myself drawn to dark, fantastical, and mythological art when I'm looking for artists that I like, but then go and draw a portrait of an actress or something because it seemed like the cool thing to do on Instagram. I wasn't helping my practice and most of those kinds of drawings would end up in a draw half finished because I'd lose interest halfway through. Meanwhile, I would get an idea for a cool dystopian landscape and that painting would be done in one sitting. I honestly never noticed how big of a difference these things made because I wasn't putting any critical thinking into what actually drew me to my desk. Pun intended. So, what changed with my focus you might ask? I can cite two artists in particular who helped me with this shift in mindset in the past year. First off was an artist that some of you may know. His name is Bobby Chu. One night last year, I opened up YouTube to see that there was a video premiere on his channel. I was late to the premiere, but I was still curious to see the chat and decided to check it out. Somewhere in there, I glimpsed a message about asking questions on Discord Zumbai, and curiouser and curiouser, I followed the link. And after the video ended, it took me to the Discord app on my phone. Please note that I have no idea how to use Discord at this point. So the app opens, I was thinking I was humming or whistling or something like that. Um, and then I heard Bobby's voice. I thought it was just another video playing from him on the TV or something. So I kept humming and then I realized I saw a call going on on the app. To my surprise, it was the man himself, Mr. Bobby Chu, speaking in real time. And because, unbeknownst to me, my mic was on, he called my name and asked if I had a question. Still thinking I was imagining this, I froze up a bit and then, after stumbling over my words for a bit, realized that I was actually on call with Bobby Chu. I panic asked a question about one of my favorite things he's worked on, which is Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland. He gave a really moving story about how he basically scored that job through both luck and sheer tyranny of will. He also spoke about choosing your guides in life carefully, and he gave me a few tips on grouping values for paintings. But that's not what we're talking about today. I, what we're talking about is I went back and watched the video afterwards. It was called Motivational Speech, if I remember correctly, and in the video he gave this scenario. Close your eyes. Imagine you're in a movie theater. It's a huge premiere, the biggest pre premiere of the year, in fact. You watch the movie, everyone loved it, and you look at the credits, and your name is in the credits. You worked on this movie. You look around you, and you're surrounded by friends and family, the loved ones there to support you. Everyone's proud of you. You're really happy. And now, I want you to scroll back for a bit. What movie did you just watch? 
Who directed this movie? What studio would have produced this kind of movie? What portfolio pieces scored you a place on the team to help work on this movie? And if you scroll back even more, think about those pieces. Those are the kinds of drawings that you should be working on. An important factor here is your taste, your personal taste, the things you like and the things that agree with your temperament. And this is where the second artist comes in. He's one that I follow very closely and he's been a big inspiration for me since I found his channel last year. It's the arrogant draftsman himself, Mr. Steven Zapata. He speaks a lot about the mindset and philosophical sides of being an artist and he's a big advocate for what I'm speaking about today. At one point, he gave some advice about refining your taste and I'd like to give it here as well. The task was to write down your taste, what you like slash what appeals to you and what you believe in, in as simple or complex language as you'd like. Just write them down. Type it in a note or grab a pencil and physically write them down. But just write the things that appeal to you in clear language. Be as general as you can at first and then as specific as you can manage. Spend some time on this. A few minutes at first can suffice. Then analyze those things you like and then write what about them appeals to you as an individual. Whether it be themes, aesthetic choices, an uplifting message, whatever the case, write it down. Then there you have it, a roadmap for what you're interested in. After that, it's up to you to follow that map to see where it leads. Today's painting is an example of me following my own map. One of the pieces of media that I wrote down when thinking of the types of projects I like is Guillermo del Toro's film Pan's Labyrinth. Both the film and novel are near and dear to me. Guillermo describes it as a fairy tale for troubled times, and I think that's a very apt description. The story and themes resonate with me deeply, but I can get more into that in another video. For now, I'll take a look at the notes I wrote about it when I was doing the exercise of describing my taste. Let me know if you could sense any of these in the painting in front of you right now. Point one, it's a fairy tale. It feels much older than you, but at the same time, it's very familiar. Point two, love of monsters. I like the acceptance and appreciation of the other. Part three was its brutality. It's unforgiving and it shows that actions have consequences, sometimes even good ones. Now this painting doesn't look like the movie by any stretch, but it feels like the parts of it I wanted to portray in this one. And it was super fun working on it at nights and in the mornings all week. And it was a big step in a new direction for my artwork, along with the rain goddess painting from my last video. It's been a wild year for me. Much like this sketch, I started out with not much direction. This used to make me really anxious, but I know myself better now. So. Even though I was trotting along this path with no clear end in sight, I kept moving forward, banking corners here, making pivots there, never stopping through these labyrinthine times. With all the zigs and zags and ups and downs, I'm not lost though, because it's a labyrinth down. And unlike a maze, a labyrinth is where things are found. Thank you for watching today, and I wish you more than luck finding yourself. See you next time.